What's going on guys? Welcome to the second episode of The Loot Drop. So today's video is packed full of a bunch of teasers, small game announcements, game updates, news, all kinds of stuff. Now, a lot of these are pretty small. It's not something that I would create a single video on, hence why The Loot Drop is here. So let's go ahead and get things started. Now, I want to introduce trivia into this because one, I love trivia and it's cool to kind of learn different things about the gaming industry. So, so today's question is what over the top first person shooter was released in the early 2000s and developed by Criterion Games, the makers of the Burnout series. This game was universally praised for its realistic sounding weapons and action movie inspired cutscenes. You can stick around to the end of the video for the answer. I'm not going to drag you across videos. Tune in next week. We're not doing that. At the end of the video, I'm giving you the answer because I hate that type of stuff. Now let's go ahead and get started with our first section and those are game updates. So. The first one, we did have our first teaser trailer for Path of Exile's new league. Now, this one is more of a skills teaser. It's only 18 seconds long. Um, a new league is coming July 23rd. The league reveal is going to be on the 15th. And they didn't really show off any of the league mechanics, which a lot of people in the comment section were pretty much just trolling, saying, this is a skills teaser. This isn't a league teaser or anything like that. You're just showing us some new skills or new ways to use skills. So cool stuff there. Um, all the links to everything is in the description below. So feel free to click and check that stuff out. Now, the next big one is Wilson related. So Wilson dropped their roadmap from now until the end of the year, and they kind of laid everything out that we can expect to see. And yes, controller support is coming. They officially have a time frame for it, which we'll get to here in a moment. And they laid these out in different content patches. So content patch three is coming in early July, probably over the next couple weeks. And this is going to bring a summons overhaul. So one of the big things for Wilson that people liked were the summons. However, the summons didn't really work out that great. They ran behind you, which was strange. They didn't run in front of you. So if you were a super squishy character, you basically got blown up before your summons even got there. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna do a complete cosmetic overhaul with new models, animations, visual effects, um, to be more kind of in line with their vision, new skills and mechanics, these summons are going to automatically respawn now, which is great. So you don't have to manage them as much. Nothing was worse than like you're in the middle of a boss fight and your tank dies. And instead of, you know, there being like a five second cooldown and then he comes back, you had to click it to bring him back to life. Sometimes you just don't even realize you're like, you know, everything's happening, all the visual effects and spell effects and everything. You don't realize that your tank's dead. So having them come back automatically is going to be great. You can now see their damage in tooltips and on screen. And finally, guys, this is a big one. They will now scale with character equipment in your Gate of Fates nodes. So we will finally have an in-game viable summons build because up until this point, they kind of scaled off of themselves, their own skill modifiers. And now they're going to scale off of that equipment and your passive tree nodes. So that way you can go out and grab some more agility and that's going to help increase your archers or you can go grab some more ferocity and that's gonna help your kind of melee skeletons. So all of those things are going to apply to summons, which is great. And then again, we're gonna have new maps. We're gonna have new skill damage types, another new set of cosmetic armor for the end game system and more quality of life improvements. They did just release a small hotfix that fixed things like blade storm. It made potions able to be used off of global cooldown and they cancel your animations so they're used immediately. So it's not like you sit there and have to wait till your animation's done, then use a potion, then there's a potion animation and then you can go back to doing your thing. Now it's just, I click potion, my health comes back up and it feels so much better. Now we have content patch four coming in September and October. This is gonna bring new end game activities and a new reward system. So they wanna add new mission types and better overall rewards for end game. More coming on that in a little bit. They also have new enemies, new maps, again, new skill damage types, new cosmetic armors. And now in content patch five coming in late November to early December, we're looking at new maps, new enemies, and controller support. So they did confirm that they have a dedicated team working on controller support specifically to make sure it feels good, it works well, it's reliable, and it makes sense. So this is something I know a lot of players are really, really waiting on. Like, I don't wanna dive into Wilson until controller support's there. Now you have somewhat of a time frame. Now, of course, there is an asterisk on this of, we wanna make sure it feels good. We don't just roll out some crappy support. 
So this could get pushed back or maybe even pushed forward if they feel better about it. They also announced some big changes coming to crafting at a later point. Um, they kind of sound like they want to overhaul this system again, maybe make it a little bit easier to understand, more traditional. Again, more bug fixes, and they're continuing to add quality of life improvements. Again, back to that hotfix they just rolled out, they brought up all of the rewards that you can buy from vendors up to whatever current expedition you're on. So instead of them capping at expedition 118, now they can go all the way up to 217 or 187 or whatever you're currently on. You can actually buy relevant gear from the vendors, including Havar, the seasonal quartermaster that's in the town hub. So good stuff there. Wilson has sold been kind of improving i know obviously it ruined a relationship with a lot of players i've been keeping my eye on it just to see if they were going to continue iterating on this or if they're going to abandon it and it looks like they are choosing to iterate upon it and try to improve it to get it to a point where players actually want to spend time in it so this may or may not influence your decision to jump back in but at the very least they have a well laid out communication plan and a list of deadlines that they plan to hit so good stuff coming to wilson but let's go ahead and keep things moving so there's a new season for warhammer 40k inquisitor martyr i really wish they would just change that name to warhammer 40k martyr but hey here we are um this one is getting a new season that's all about the void and it's gonna bring your regular kind of fixings for a season right new items a seasonal buff feature improvements but the big thing is something that a lot of players have been asking for since this game released a long time ago and that is they're finally adding co-op to end game. So Void Crusades will be able to be played with friends. Finally, this is way overdue. And honestly, this is going to help this game find a longer lifespan for its niche market because right now you can only play end game solo, which a lot of players do, right? You know, a lot of players don't like to opt in and play in a co-op party, but those who want to play with friends never had that option. It was weird because you'd be able to play with friends all the way up until end game. And then it'd be like, hey, sayonara, I'm going to go grind end game and you grind end game. We'll sit in voice chat and talk about all the cool drops we get, but we can't play together. So it was a really, really strange design decision from the beginning, but they're jumping in, they're correcting it, and you'll now be able to play with friends. So if you ever wanted to play Warhammer 40k Inquisitor Martyr, now is probably the time. So that wraps up the big game updates. Let's move into the news. So obviously the largest piece of news we had was the Diablo 4 quarterly update. And this time around, the Diablo quarterly update focused entirely on the art of Diablo. Mm -hmm. Things like character models, animations, the look and feel of environments, how they create their iconic dark atmosphere. Now they did have a couple kind of pieces of information that we were able to pull from this. They did insinuate that we will be starting with five classes, but we'll have more in the future. Um, the quote here of, these character customization solutions had to work not just for a single character, but for hundreds of componentized armor sets, different body types, dozens of unique personas, and completely unique art for five distinct classes, parentheses, to start, end quote. So we do know that we will be getting more classes at some point, or at least that's the game plan, right? They're going to have five to kick us off and then uh, moving into the future, maybe we'll have some extra ones get added. But either way, that was kind of a cool little call out. They did confirm we will have a wardrobe system, kind of like transmog. There was some new info on the die system. You can change the color of all pieces of your gear individually. So if you really want to you know, have a black kind of headpiece with a white chest piece and then black boots, you can change things using the die system for that. They did say you can either apply it all at once or you can go back and apply it individually, just one thing at a time. Now we do have some new looks at some of the enemies, the armor, the animations, good stuff there. There's a lot of technical stuff packed into this one and a lot of artistic jargon, but it's a really, really good read. I do recommend checking it out if you want to know more, but if you're someone who really kind of cares about the nitty gritty kind of min maxing details about the items, the end game, the actual gameplay elements, this might be a little bit boring for you, but if you're someone who really likes to see how a game comes together through the use of art, then this is a fantastic blog article. So moving into our next topic, we do have an interesting development from Casey Hudson. So Casey Hudson is the former general manager over at BioWare, and he founded a new gaming company called Humanoid Studios. They're currently hiring a slew of developers and are, quote, 
aiming to bring innovation and artistry to players through an all new IP. So if we take a look at the last two games that Casey Hudson had touched, we have Anthem and we have Dragon Age 4. Now I do believe he kind of messed with a little bit with the Legendary Edition for Mass Effect, but that kind of brings into the question, will this be something like an Anthem 2.0 where they'll kind of experiment or do something a little bit different, kind of taking that innovation piece a little bit more seriously? Or are we gonna see a classic Bioware style game heavy with narrative dripping with that artistry that he's talking about we'll have to see but for now like i said he's hiring a ton of people he did say we have a new ip interesting to see him kind of leave bioware and then immediately kind of talk about his new thing that he's doing over here hopefully it'll end up being something good but we're not going to know for another like five or six years most likely so for now we're just going to have to wait and see and focus on other things so let's talk about the second biggest thing that happened in the kind of isometric action rpg world and that's magic legends so Magic Legends announced this week that they will be sunsetting the game this October. And this game never even left beta. Remember, it launched into open beta. It had a terrible review. I had my $200 pay to win kind of video on it, which by the way, they're refunding that $200, which is awesome. Not entirely sure why Perfect World would do that. Um, just going off their history. But this marks another strong concept and a strong IP, a very, very well established and rooted IP that failed to hit the mark when Perfect World Entertainment is somehow attached to it. First, we had Torchlight 3, Torchlight Frontiers, kind of however you want to approach that. And now we have Magic Legends. So it just seems like anything that Perfect World Entertainment is involved in just doesn't ever really execute well. You have Neverwinter and Star Trek Online, which are decent games in their own right, but they're just heavy with pay to win, pay for convenience items. And that sucks. I really wish that we could have some games that are established like that without having all of those microtransactions injected into the core of those games. And to be fair, Magic as a whole, when it comes to gaming, just needs to shed the whole card mechanic thing. They need to create an actual RPG without leaning on that crutch. I would love to explore a world without seeing decks and cards all over the place. Like, just let me be a planeswalker and summon things and cast spells and be an actual character in the world and have this weird card mechanic bolted on that just doesn't feel organic to what you're trying to create create. So I just feel like those never do well. And hopefully in the future, we can have something decent. But for now, Magic Legends is dead. If you spent money on it, check your bank account because it's going to be coming back to you. If you use any prepaid cards, they're going to refund those prepaid cards plus an extra $10 on top of it. So again, you're going to have some money coming back at you. So let's go ahead and let's talk about some new games that were announced this past week, two weeks, because um, we're doing this every other week, obviously. So the first one is Space Punks. So this is a new game that was revealed this week that really kind of caught me off guard. I didn't expect to like it as much as I did. Um, it's this kind of mashup of Borderlands meets Twin Stick Shooter in a good way. And we don't know too much about this one yet, right? There's going to be some big announcements coming this coming week to reveal a little more about the game. So I'm going to keep my ears open, try to learn as much as I can about it hopefully we get to see some actual gameplay that's not stitched together and kind of like marketing eyes but we'll have to wait and see next up is death's door so this is one that again kind of flew under my radar a little bit if you liked hades then this is a game you need to add to your list Apparently, it's not a roguelike, but it's still a challenging game. Mistakes are punished, victory is rewarded, is kind of their mantra. So the premise here is you play as a crow, and this crow reaps the souls of the dead, and then one day, while trying to go about your business, you know, just a regular soul-reaping crow, one of your souls gets stolen from you. And then you have to track it down through this unknown realm where things don't die. And you have to use your melee weapons and arrows and magic to overcome this whole army of creatures who have cheated death and have become incredibly powerful because of it. And as you play through it, you're going to learn different ways to customize your character's stats. You're going to earn upgrades, become more powerful yourself. And it's a really, really cool one. So this is going to be launching July 20th. And like I said, those who got to play it out in the media industry are comparing it to Hades. We all know how awesome that game was. So the bar is ratcheting up on Death's Door. Hopefully it can execute and do extremely well. But for now, we'll have to wait and see. And let's go ahead and move into our next game. And that is anvil so i'm going to admit guys this game another one completely flew under my radar i missed out on the demo they did a few weeks ago but for a short while this was actually the talk of the town in my discord it felt like it was a more rounded and complete kill squad now it is a roguelike game but this one has a similar cycle to hades and other kind of less punishing roguelike games 
you head out into these things called vaults and you're searching for valuables. And like you may have guessed, these vaults are filled with creatures looking to fight, kill you, take what they want. And players need to use any dropped weapons and artifacts to increase their chance of survival. So you can see a legendary weapon drop and pick it up and it's awesome, it clears screens and it's great. But if you die, you lose all of your gear. You lose all of the equipment, the weapons, the artifacts that you found during your run, but you do keep that experience and you can unlock permanent upgrades that are going to help you on your next adventure, hopefully last even longer and get even more gear and more experience. This one has a lot of support and a lot of people are really excited to get their hands on it. It is launching in September. It looks really good. Hopefully we'll get one more maybe demo or beta ahead of launch so we can dive in there and check it out. So guys, that wraps up all of the news, the updates, all of the new games, all that fun stuff for this week. But we do have one last thing to cover and that's the trivia. So the answer to this was the game called Black. Now this game was an absolute stud on the PlayStation and Xbox. I remember picking this one up after seeing some gameplay on X-Play, right? Adam Sessler playing it. And being a massive first person shooter fan, it did not disappoint. I had a great, great time with this one. But despite the success of Black, Criterion would then go on to only make four more shooter games, including Battlefield 5 and the upcoming Battlefield 2042. And it's kind of funny seeing how a studio that made its reputation off of a racing series game, Burnout, and now they're making some of the biggest first-person shooter games out there. You had Black, which was very well received. They made Battlefield 5, and now they're making the much, much anticipated Battlefield 2042. So cool stuff there. But guys, that wraps this one up. Thank you guys so much for the support. I really appreciate it. Let me know in the comment section below if there was a piece of news or something we covered that you really enjoyed. And also let me know if I missed anything. Was there a massive update that I didn't cover here that you think more people should know about? Talk about it in the comments section below. And as always, guys, thank you so much for the support. This has been Vulcan and I'll talk to you next time.